And we welcome you back to Montana State University. We're in the field house on the campus in Bozeman, Montana. And the crowd right now just anticipating the arrival of their hero. And their hero is a fellow by the name of Todd Foster, who is looking more and more like a future champion. Here is a look at the other half of the contest tonight. This is not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination for Todd Foster, because Mauricio Aceves has been around. 26, 10, and 1, has been a champion. 19 knockouts, he can get you out of there. Foster cannot afford to take a CVS lightly. Foster is a guy who seems to be improving with every out. He says he wants to pick up the caliber of competition, and he's doing it tonight. Not since the miniseries Lonesome Dove has anyone been able to focus television attention into Montana as effectively as Todd Foster. This lightweight contender showed us Butte, and he showed Davey Montana the door back in August. Body shot sent him down in the eighth, and Todd used his lightning quick combinations to put him out in the 10th round. And then, Great Falls was the site in October when Dwayne Swift got on the tour bus. It was a rocky ride, and he got off in the sixth. But Todd knows that tonight, his guest, Mauricio Achivas, might not be so anxious to cooperate. And here is Todd Foster, and the crowd now recognizes him. Listen to the, to the respect that this man has here in Bozeman. Todd Foster knows he's stepping up in class, and uh, here's what he says about Aceves. Yeah, he's definitely my toughest opponent. He has a great arsenal of punches. He um, he comes on late in the fight, through the middle rounds, the late, he comes on pretty hard. He's always in great shape, That I, the films I've seen him. He, he does a lot of different things. He's good defensively, he's really good offensively, he has a great arsenal of punches, and uh, he's gonna be a good test for me. So it's Aceves and Foster, and let's talk about the keys to victory, Al. All right, we, <coughs> so we take a look. The rhythm method, he says he's got to get into his rhythm early. Hook him, Todd. Hey, don't forget the left hook, Todd. Use that punch. For Aceves, the transition game for him is switching from lefty to righty. That's something they might not be expecting. And get the right stuff. Use the right hand, which is a good weapon for him. Should be a most entertaining fight, and I don't think any question about it. It's going to be the most serious test to date so far for Todd Foster. Let's meet him now with Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser present the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the State of Montana Board of Athletics Chairman Andy Vandola, Commissioners Harry Atchison and Dr. John Halseth. Doctor at ringside is Dr. Tom Hildner. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Lyle Brugman, Gerald Dunbar, and Joe Antonietti. The timekeeper, Jim Clark, counting for the knockdown seconds, Arvin Otter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Brick Breeden Fieldhouse here at Montana State University in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> 10 rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. The referee for this bout is Kevin McCarl. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim and weighing 134 and one half pounds, he's from Mexico City, Mexico. His professional record, 26 victories with 19 KOs, 10 defeats and one draw. He's the former WBO world champion, ladies and gentlemen, Mauricio Aceves. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with black trim, weighing 136 and one half pounds, from Great Falls, Montana. This 1988 U.S. Olympian is undefeated as a professional with a record of 21 and 0, 18 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of the Big Sky Country, Todd Kid Foster. Clean fight, watch your heads, obey my commands, and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck to both of you. 
So there is a look at Mauricio Aceves, and I'll tell you, he's not only fighting Todd Foster, he's fighting about 7,000 others in here. They are here to root for that man, Todd Foster, in a pre-fight prayer. And I'll tell you what, I could sense today, though, I want to say he's nervous, but he's pumped up for this fight. You know, I felt exactly the same thing. I didn't, I don't feel that Foster is quite as loose as I've seen him be before a fight. Also has come in without having really broken too much of a sweat, although, as you look at the knockout ratio of these two, Seves is a guy who is likely to get you out of there if he wins with the 19 knockouts, but Aceves said he doesn't want to jump on Foster early. He's going to wait and see what Foster brings to the dance, so that could serve Foster well. We did say to Aceves, though, can you win by knockout? And he says, well, I've won a lot of my fights by knockout, and I've got a good right hand, so I can do it. We'll see. Aceves, as you touched upon, gives you a lot of different looks and can be confusing to a young fighter like Todd Foster. I think that left hook is going to be a key for Foster. I think if there's one part of his, his arsenal that is something that I think might even get better as he continues to be a pro, it's the left hook. He's got a good one for the body and the head. He's concentrating more on it as each fight goes on. Body some, Todd. Work that body some now. Come on, Sam. Let the body, Todd. Grab the body. Grab the body. Sivis lost his last fight down in Pretoria, South Africa, because he was cut over the left eye in the eighth round. He lost to Aladdin Stevens. Previous to that, he lost his WBO title against Dion Tabella in Brownsville, Texas. Tabella, also a South African. And he says he has an opportunity to get a rematch. It would be the third time that those two have fought, but he needs this one. That back Foster up. And Foster landed a right in that exchange as well. Both men landing very good shots here in the first round. first round of Seves has managed to keep the crowd out of the fight. I, I really believe that'll be a factor for him. Yeah, very important because he's done enough to not let Foster walk all over him in this first round and really get this crowd in. The same token, I really like Todd Foster's attitude. For me. He's not satisfied to stay where he is, fighting guys who he should be. He wants a guy he says he really is going to test him. Well, he's going to have to do that because to be taken seriously at this point, he's going to have to step up in competition. That's what he's starting to do tonight. Foster affecting the no sock look tonight. First time we've seen that. End of the first round, very competitive first round. And Aceves is not going to go away, I'll tell you that. Barry Tompkins with Al Bernstein, ready to start the second round of our main event here at the Fieldhouse on the Montana State University campus in Bozeman. Very even first round. I, now, Aceves backing Foster up, and I was gonna say in that first round, if you can do that against Foster, he tends to stand straight up and not punch. Aceves much more aggressive as we start the second round. You can see what a close first round it was. Aceves more effective, actually. Yeah, landing a few more. Todd Foster throwing Ezo. his average, 91 punches. Ezo. He always throws a lot of punches. Ezo. Aceves really pushing Foster back and landing very well. Foster has been there for the right hand from Aceves, but he takes a right hand. We haven't seen uh, Mauricio switch yet to lefty, which he can do. And I would think we might only be a round or so away from seeing that happen. Seves, of course, training in Mexico City, training at altitude, training in the warmer, warmer climes. Comes up here where the temperatures have been right around the freezing mark, snow all over the place. We're well, talking about a culture shock for him. This is a different place for him, there's no question about it. It could have been worse though. We could two ago it was even colder here. That's true. That 
missed that right hand caught on the shoulder of Aceves. Crowd reaction may indicate that Foster's doing more than he is, but that was a good right hand. And I'll tell you, Aceves doing the right thing, going right after Foster after that, so he doesn't give the impression he was hurt. Well, that early advantage in this round by Aceves being eaten up a little bit by Foster now. See if there's a good right hand by Foster. Nice short right hand. I think that hurt Aceves. And the hook behind it. The accuracy of Foster has not been quite as good in this bout as we've seen in the last couple. Aceves does give you a lot of different angles, though. Crowd very quiet, just waiting for the top Foster Barrage. A little bit of one there. Taking the top Foster's corner. Foster picked the tempo up in that second round after starting a little bit slowly. See what taking that right foot out does? Yeah. It nullifies, it nullifies that head movement he's getting coming forward. You understand? Yeah. Getting that head forward, every time you take that right foot out, you're nullifying him. You're able to hit him. You're not smothering anything yeah. now. Now what you're doing now is every time he's doing that lean, though, you're getting up a little bit. Take that right foot out, but don't get up. Okay? okay. Todd Foster landing this good straight right hand. That was the one that pushed Aceves back. And later on in the round, to we'll see him again with the short right. So he, he came on in the last portion of that round to erase what was a, an edge for Aceves yeah, earlier. Changed up a little bit, hip hop level. That's good. Royce Penny Weldon in the corner of Todd Foster. And good corner man, gives you just one or two pieces of information to think about. It's exactly what Kenny did. Kenny Weldon always reminds me in the way he handles himself in the corner uh, of another trainer who uh, I have a great respect for, Jesse Reed. They have similar approaches in the corner, both do a great job. In the second round, mm, again, a service with a bit of an edge, although really it didn't appear that way, did it? No, and I'll tell you what, when a guy throws 97 punches to 80, he's probably going to get the round because there you see what punch profile says landed, but somebody else might not agree with them. And if a guy throws that many more punches, chances are they may see more landing from But it is a close bout. This to be a little nick of the left eye of Aceves. Right in the corner of the left eye. Good hook a moment ago by Aceves, but he is not, he's not getting a lot of leverage on the, the left hook. His right would be the better power punch for him. Good hook by Foster right on that little cut. I gave Foster the uh, second round after making the first even. The eye very close. Aceves is finding a home for the right hand now, Barry. He's getting it in, and a couple of them, I think, have shown Foster he's got a little power there. He does have a little cut, though, and there's a headbutt. They, I think they both clashed heads, and that's where the cut came from on Aceves. But now there is a little swelling, a little cut from that headbutt on the right cheek of Todd Foster. The jab of Aceves, an excellent weapon. That set up that right hand a moment ago. Very good exchange by both men. Seves is coming in with his head first, though. Then you know what? So is Foster to an extent. Todd's doing the complaining, but they're both pushing their head in there. I'm not sure I'm willing to blame Seves for that. They're going to have to get some end swell on that cheek of Foster. It's not much of a problem now, but again, that is the kind of thing that could swell up and cause him some vision problems. Again, a very, very close round. Blood from the nose of a Seves now, too. 
Now there's Foster using his head on the inside, so it's not just one-sided here. I'm not even saying he did it on purpose, but his head banged off Aceves's head. There's the jab. Mauricio Aceves, when he uses the jab effectively, is really right in this bout, but forgets that punch a lot. Another case of Parker using his head a little bit. Another good round and another very close round. Now Aceves with a little cut over his left eye. Actually, it's alongside the left eye, above the eye and alongside, as you can see where they're working on it right now. A little blood from the nose as well. And Todd Foster with a little problem on the cheek caused by a headbutt. I don't need to watch his head on the inside when it comes in. That cut is right in a very bad spot. Watch it, hey, watch, watch it, I'm breaking And we'll take a look at where they clashed heads, and this may have... Well, that was on the other side, so you know what? That isn't where he got the cut over the, the left eye, but no, that's, where, not, that's that, where Foster got his his uh, problem on the uh, cheek for sure. We talked about that end swell, and that's exactly what they were getting on the cheek. That's what you see right at the top of the screen there. Watch his head, Come on, Devin. Keep it up, guys. Referee between rounds went to a Seves' corner where they speak Spanish. The Seves does not speak English and said, tell him to not use his head. And that cut uh, on Aceves is the same location in which uh, he was cut against Aladdin Stevens when he uh, had the loss uh, to him in the technical uh, TKO in Pretoria this year. That's a long way to go to get cut. Yeah. And you can see in the third round, Aceves again with a slight edge, but he's got three people with scorecards. Well, Foster actually had the edge in, in terms of punches landed in that last round. Foster throwing a lot more, and of course that will that will often get you the round. And another warning for headbutting by Aceves, and Aceves is going to run a risk of getting disqualified here if he's not too careful. blood again from the left eye of Aceves. I think that Mauricio, oh good right by Foster. Mauricio Aceves is really missing the boat here by not using his jab a lot. He's landing it when he, when he throws it, and he's able to get the right hand in very effectively when he uses the jab, but he's not using it enough. Now he's so, throwing a lot of solo punches right now. So he's giving, letting Todd Foster an effect off the hook. Foster's just busier. Todd Foster will win many, many bouts in his professional career and has already simply because he throws a lot of punches. That, by that good left hook. First round in which Todd Foster really seems to have taken control. End of the fourth round, and this one seems convincingly in the corner of Todd Foster. Foster throwing the combinations that we talked about. There it is, the jab, the straight right hand, even going backwards, which is rare for him. We start the fifth round now, and Foster seemingly took control in that last round. Yeah, that was might have been one of his best rounds in the bout. Let's see if the numbers substantiate that, and they do. And the key there is, as Foster lands well, 
Still right there in the 90s. Todd Foster always is going to throw over 90 punches around. Remember uh, at the beginning of the bout when I warned you that uh, Aceves would probably switch to the lefty stance at some point. Aren't you glad I warned you? He hasn't done it once Not yet, no. in five rounds. But in fact, Foster expected that too. Yeah, he really did. And you've got Foster with a shutout so far. Interesting enough. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I do first round even. And I've given him the lat next three after it. So uh, would that make, that wouldn't put him four up, would it? Somewhere in there we may need to check our arithmetic because um, he wouldn't be four ahead, I don't think, would he? But he is ahead, make what, no mistake about it. What's in a number? Now Seva starts to extend himself a little bit. That cut is not getting any better. Along the left eye of a Seves. This is our main event, Todd Foster of Montana, out of Great Falls, actually, in the red trunks. In the blue trunks, Mauricio Aceves, a former champion, the WBO title holder. Foster right now seemingly starting to swing this fight very much in his favor. A little bit of a cut along the left eye of Aceves. Foster heard of Seves is what we're trying to say. Yeah, I was going to say that he impressed him with his power and or hurt him, whichever. <laughs> There's also a cut now, I believe, over the right eye of the Seves. Roger Mayweather was able to put a Seves out in the third round when they fought. One of the quality opponents that the Seves has been in against. Other than that, it's pretty tough to uh, to take him out. A couple others have done it, but it's not something that happens to him often. Cuts on both eyes now, Vesevis, and that could really get to be a problem for him. End of the fifth round, and Todd Foster continues to have things go his way. Right at the end of the round. Remember this? Todd Foster with an excellent lead right hand. And it was legal just before the bell rang. And Aceves went back to his corner just a little bit wobbly. And I'll tell you what, they didn't get to work on the two cuts over each eye of Aceves real quick. And you can feel that Todd Foster really wants to go after him now. And he looks like he could. Punches through five rounds now. Foster with a decided edge. Not a huge edge, but a fairly big edge. And the reason for that is Aceves is still throwing punches. Even the last round, he threw 91, though Foster threw 105. But while the decision seemed to be somewhat in doubt for the first three or four rounds, right now it does not. Now Foster is taking control, and it'll be up to Aceves to really hurt him or make something dramatic happen to change things around. Right hand of Foster is getting there now, too, with some consistency. Good jab by a seven. See, if you can back Todd Foster up and keep him busy, he doesn't punch. And not many people that we've seen have done that real effectively against him. They've done it sporadically, Barry, but not over the course of a whole round or a whole fight. Seves with cuts over both eyes. by Foster. When he throws all those combinations, they're not devastating punches, but they keep an opponent busy. And if one out of four lands, well, he's in business because he throws so many. Again, Aceves being told about leading with his head. See, now that's where, in that posture, I believe Todd Foster should stay in there and rip the left hook to the body and the left hook to the head. He's throwing only the left hook upstairs. 
He's got an excellent left hook to the bottom. Foster goes a little low with one of his punches, probably in retaliation for what he felt was a low blow from Aceves earlier in this round. And again, the head of Aceves. starting to take on a pattern now, and the pattern is going all the way of Todd Foster. You're in the corner now, Mauricio Aceves, and he's got some big problems. That is a very bad cut over the right eye. And it's not in a good spot at all. He is a boxer that's taken more punishment, I think, in this beginning portion of the bout than he thought he might from Foster. Yeah, he said he was going to wait and see what Foster had and try to figure out what he was going to do. And I think by the time he figured out what he needed to do, it might have been too late. But a reminder, the Winston Cup continues here on ESPN. The Hardys 500 takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. That is this Sunday, 12.40 Eastern time. We get underway. Dale Earnhardt can wrap up the Winston Cup title. All he has to do is get around the track line. They don't even have to get around the track. Just leave the starting line. Get the car going. No puede, no puede. No puede. That's it. That's it. And I think they're going to stop it. It's over. Tom Foster is a winner as the Cevis cannot get off the stool to start the seventh round. Well, he had taken a, a pounding, although in the last round he had not really been punished as much as the previous round. But whatever, he couldn't sustain under the attack of Todd Foster. And even though it didn't look like Aceves was a, a step up, by all rights he should have been. And so let's give Todd Foster some credit for handling this man as well as he did. Made some nice adjustments. Aceves never did give him a lot of different looks, which is what you and I and Todd Foster and Kenny Weldon and everybody else that had anything to do with this fight thought he was going to do. That was what we anticipated. We take a look and see that it wasn't as if Aceves was completely and totally out of this bout or totally dominated. Clearly he was losing and he was getting hurt by Foster. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody who could question Aceves' decision, or was it the doctor's decision, not to come out for the seventh round? Certainly nobody in this building uh, is bothered by no, it. No, <laughs> nobody at all. They might have wanted it done with a little more flair, but... Unless somebody way up in the rafters is really rooting for Mauricio Aceves. And they would be doing it quietly. Yes. Well, as you mentioned, Aceves literally on foreign turf here. I mean, yeah. this is a very different world for Mauricio Aceves. We've had a great time out there. The nice people, as we mentioned. Uh, this is Big Sky Country personified. I mean, up here, the Elks Club has real Elks. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's get the official word down for Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The bell rang for the seventh round, but the round did not start. As the corner, the red corner advised referee Kevin McCarl that Mauricio Aceves could no longer continue the winner by TKO, still undefeated. Foster to the joy of the crowd here on the campus of Montana State is a winner yet another time. We'll be back to talk with Todd Foster right after this. And we welcome you back to Bozeman, Montana. Right now, let's go up to the center of the ring. Al Bernstein with a winner, Todd Foster. Al? All right, we are here with Todd and his winning team and a happy team at that. Mauricio Aceves didn't quite show you all the cute looks you thought he would, but maybe let's give you credit for taking some of that away from him. Well, that was our game plan. I knew he kind of started off a little bit slow, and so and then he starts getting into his game plan about the middle of the rounds, four, fourth round on. So our game plan was to take it away from him, and that's what I was doing. And then third, fourth round, it was starting to be a battle of wills. You know, it was a chess match in there, and I had to keep the momentum. I had to keep my rhythm going and, and keep him out for his fight because you could see when he got his fight going, yeah. he was a tough mother. You know, he, tried, he runs right over you. So I decided to 
get back in my rhythm and take him out of this fight. All right, we're going to quickly bring Bob Spagnola. What is the story for Todd's next fight? And we hear he may even fight Kelsey Banks somewhere down the road. What's the story? Well, uh, we've got an opportunity. Uh, Mr. Aram and Bruce have discussed with us the possibility of fighting on TV KO, and we're real excited about that. That'll be a great opportunity for us. And, uh, Looking forward to everybody up here being able to key in and, and watch us. All right, not nearly as exciting as fighting on ESPN, of course. No, no, I no, don't I, mean I, know, I knew you I meant mean. that, Bob, but I was just Slip checking. Slip of the tongue. Slip <laughs> of the tongue. That is a great opportunity for you. And, Ty, congratulations. Thank you. Okay, and I hit Kenny Weldon. I, I hit Kenny with a good right hand back here, and he, he able to survive it. I, I don't have a punch anymore. Anyway, we'll be back with more here from Montana. So don't go. we got a lot of good boxing action still to come.